Hi guys, welcome to the archive. In the last video I showed you how to make a modular temple, the stair pieces of which will be used in this build too. You'll need two stair pieces per wall piece that you want to build, along with one stone dungeon tile and one battlement from this guide. Today I'll be showing you how to make the core walls and battlements of the system, including the functional machiculations which often get called murder holes, which they're not technically, but they do serve a similar purpose. In the videos I'll be releasing later this month, I'll also show you how I added modular corners to those battlements, which allow me to make the towers and keep, along with the modular doors that work with them, before finally showing you how I made the gate and the modular accessories that you can use with all of it. You can start work on these in any order you want. If you feel like a gate will be the most useful to you, and that video has been released, jump over and start there. Then if you want, you can stop there, or you can go on and make the walls and towers. Or you can work vice versa, building the walls or temple first, and moving on to make a gate for it later. As I will keep mentioning, this project is designed to be as simple or as complex as you want to make it. You can make as much or as little of it as you want. Most of this stuff can be used separately too. The tiles and stairs can be used as part of a dungeon build and so on. If you haven't seen it already, there's also a video earlier in this playlist where I go through all the different ways you can transform the terrain from these videos just like your old Transformer toys, which I definitely don't still have in the attic and play with every time I go up there. No, definitely not. No. I made the bulk of this build over a year ago with one inch thick tiles. It was originally part of a Colosseum build for which the one inch tiles work better. But this time around for you guys, I'm gonna show you how to make it using half inch tiles. This will not only save you on foam and in my opinion, make the build look even better. It'll also make these tiles compatible with future modular builds of mine which I have quite a few in mind. The bonus of this is that if you already have tiles of these dimensions, you can actually make use of them by just attaching the card system beneath and making some edits to the crenellations when we get to that point. But I'll show you those in the tutorial when we get to them. You might be able to tell I've used some techniques on this project made popular by two of the more popular crafters in the community, Black Magic Craft and Wylock, so much credit to them. That said, the system itself I've designed from the ground up to work not only smoothly together, but smoothly with other projects that I have coming up, so keep an eye out for those. To get started, all you'll need is to cut a piece of half inch XPS foam into a three inch by three inch piece. If you're using a knife and not a hot wire table, this is where the guide diverges somewhat. The next step is to cut an eighth of an inch from the bottom of the tile. If you're using a knife, you can choose not to do this, at which point follow my instructions for those people who have existing half inch tiles that they want to use for this, and don't want to cut that eighth of an inch off the bottom either. Once you've cut that eighth of an inch from the bottom, you need only follow the exact same procedure as for the stair piece in the modular temple video before this one, except you'll only be doing it for one three by three piece. Cut the grid, either with a knife or hot wire table, use a ballpoint pen to widen the line, cut strips and chunks out, and then texture. If you'd like to know more about these techniques, check out that first video. Finally, you'll need to add the card tile system beneath the foam. I've done this using 1 16th of an inch thick cardstock, and it must be nice thick cardstock. This absolutely will not work with cereal box card or anything like that. Cut out five squares of 7 eighths of an inch, then cut one square of two and 7 eighths of an inch. This will give you the base format of the grid system. From here, you'll need to array them out like so and glue them in place using a thin layer of tacky glue or strong PVA glue, but tacky glue is better. Make sure the layer is thin as too much glue at this stage can remove some of the grip of the tile later on. At this point, you can also trim a small chunk from each corner as it seems to help prevent it from fraying. Finally, put a thin layer of tacky glue on the visible side of the five card squares. Line it up with the foam tile and glue it in place on top. The card layer here is slightly smaller than the foam. This is designed to draw the eye to the foam and allow the connection system to fall into the shadows. Then you just need to make your connecting tabs. For the tile connections, cut out a card piece which is 7 eighths of an inch in one direction and 1 and 7 eighths of an inch in the other. So basically, slightly less than an inch by 2 inches. 
Once you've got it, cut the corners to help prevent fraying again. I'll cover how to make connecting tabs for the crenellations in that section. They are slightly different. Speaking of that section, for each battlement piece you will need four one inch by half an inch by half an inch bricks, one three inch by one inch by half an inch main piece, and two one inch by one inch by half an inch squares. If you're using half inch tiles that you have already and you've simply glued the card system to the bottom of these tiles, you'll need to make some edits to the battlement at this point. So for one of the one inch tiles, instead of it being half an inch thick, it'll need to be five eighths of an inch thick. This is to account for the difference. Measure 1 16th of an inch on one side of the one inch square piece and measure 3 16 of an inch deep on the back and sides, but not the front like I've done here. I actually messed up on camera here and only did it 2 16 of an inch deep rather than 3 16 of an inch deep. It still comes out pretty well, but your final piece will be even smoother if you don't mess it up like me. Once you've measured, cut this small chunk off the bottom using a knife, leaving the front of the square intact. Don't worry if you destroy the piece you cut off. This is the perfect time to make use of any spare one inch cuts that you have to trim a slice to fit. Texture the thin cut off thoroughly, especially on the edges, and trim it on a hot wire table until it's only 1 16th of an inch thick. This is so it will smoothly fit beneath the card that we're going to glue to that square later, hiding it from view. Then grab that 3 inch main piece and measure and mark out half inch by one inch brick shapes. From there, cut lines into them about an eighth of an inch deep and use a ballpoint pen to bevel the edges. Cut chunks and strips off the edge to weather it and texture using some balled up tin foil. Check out the temple video again if you want to know more about these techniques. Finally, push in a cocktail stick in both edges of the wall in the middle, about one inch deep. Trim the edges and texture the two half inch bricks and then glue them to the main piece top. You'll want to leave about a half inch gap on one side between the two bricks. Now we need to make the card slot and tab. It's pretty straightforward. The card socket is made of two 7 eighths of an inch squares. What you'll need to do is cut a half an inch by half an inch deep hole in the middle of one side of one piece. From there, you can tacky glue the cut card piece in place on the bottom of the foam square and use tacky glue in a thin layer again to glue the full card piece on top. Try to make sure the connection is as tight as possible. We can always increase the space in there by wiggling a cocktail stick around later. To finish up, tacky glue the thin foam textured piece you kept earlier on top to hide the card. This piece might have stretched a bit due to the texturing. You can trim this off carefully using a knife. After that, it should line up perfectly. Once you've got all that, all you need is the connecting piece. Cut out a one inch by three eighths of an inch piece of card and cut the corners. Take the final two half inch bricks, cut the edges and texture all of them. You'll also want to texture the front, top and sides of the card slot piece. Then simply glue the main piece to the supports. Make sure you glue them the right way around each time with the half inch gap on the right as you look at the outside of the battlement. This is very important to make sure that it lines up with the corner pieces that I'll show you how to make later, but also to make sure that it lines up with every other battlement piece that you make. Finally, cut your final one inch by half an inch square into two quarter inch squares, and then in half again diagonally to make four triangles. Texture and cut the edges of these pieces, but leave the right angled edges untextured and uncut, as these will line up with the wall and battlement. Glue these triangular supports to the bottom with a half inch gap on the central support. Leave a quarter inch gap on the edges of the smaller support bricks. 
When these are combined with the next battlement over, it'll appear to be a half inch gap. Now that you've got the pieces you need, it's fairly straightforward to assemble them as a functional wall. There are tons of cool things that you can do with this system, everything from larger walls and double-sided battlements to displaying battle damage and breached walls. If you haven't already, check out the first video in this series for more ways to use this terrain. I hope this was useful and that you get a lot out of this terrain. If so, maybe hit subscribe and hit the bell too if you want to see any of the future videos in the series or future videos that I make. Have you got an idea to make the system better? I always love to hear about it in the comments. That's all from me for now. Until next time, I'll be in the archive.